Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video. And in this video, I'm giving you guys eight specific tips for using walls in base building. And you guys can use these uh, different techniques in the very next base you build. This applies to pretty much any town hall level, so it's not town hall specific. Um, you can use it pretty much regardless of your town hall level. So we'll get right into it though. Um, these are some different tips regarding how you position walls relative to defenses and other things in the base. So we have um, this little setup here with all different kinds of mini bases, parts of a base, and talk about why these walls are positioned a certain way and uh, what the benefit is. So let's get started. This first one here is something I always stress, but I wanted to include it in this video just to reemphasize this point. You might have heard it on my channel already, and that is putting these key defensive buildings, specifically point defense, um, four tiles or more away from the wall, but four is kind of the magic number because queen walks, queen charges are so powerful right now that you have to be able to defend against them. So for exterior queen walks where the queen stays outside the base, you want the, uh, the point defense in question to have four tiles between it and the exterior outermost wall. The reason is the queen cannot reach that defense over that amount of distance. Um, the expo would have to be closer, but it's not. Um, we have the four tiles. If you look, kind of count them here, you have the cannon, which takes up three plus an extra wall, um, which doesn't need to be here. You don't need to have walls. Um, it could just as easily be like that. But as long as the expo or whatever point defense you have is that distance from the outer wall, that's a good number. You want to have one of these types of defenses in pretty much every uh, major section of your base, maybe three of them all spread out around your base, four would be even better. This way someone can't do an easy queen walk where they just walk her around the perimeter of the base because this one defense will be targeting her, but she won't be able to take it down. So expos are great because they do a lot of damage and um, they're important buildings that you don't want them to get sniped on a queen walk. You want them inside your base to hurt the queen, but also defend hogs or loons or whatever comes into the base because they're high HP, difficult to destroy. So that's an important thing. Moving on to the next one here. And by the way, this red air bomb is going to... Um, basically be used to show where the outside of the base is when it's not clear. So keep that in mind. This next one's a very simple one. If you have different level walls, if you have, like I have half of my walls are level 11. Well, actually I wish half of them were. About a third or a fourth of my walls are level 11. The rest are level 10. Use the higher level walls on the outside of your base because those are the layers that get hit with wall breakers that are actually broken by troops. Inside the base, people are either going to use hogs, miners, air, all things that don't care about walls, or they're going to use jump spells and uh, stuff like that, quakes, to open up the base. Now, this might change if we see like HGHB where giants have to you know swing through each wall as they go through the base. If that becomes more popular, this might change, but pretty much for all town hall levels, inside the base, people are using jumps and quakes or troops that don't care about walls. So put these walls on the outside because this is where it's going to matter how how uh, strong they are. Uh, put the, the walls that require the most wall breakers on the outside. That way the attacker um, is going to have to bring more wall breakers or um, if their troops have to swing through a wall, it'll take longer. So the outside walls are more valuable than the ones closer inside the base towards the core. Outer layer, you want higher level walls. Um, this next tip is for the queen, who, um, for those of you Town Hall 9 and above, very important to protect her, especially Town Hall 10. Now the infernos are less important. The queen is great at killing loons, hogs, um, all that kind of stuff that we're going to see a lot at Town Hall 10 for three-star attempts. So she's very important to protect. And one thing you can do that trips up the uh, defender, or the attacker rather, is having her two tiles away from... An adjacent compartment. So this kind of shows what I mean. Have two tiles in between her and the wall. That's kind of a magic number because it's very difficult to predict whether or not she'll jump that wall as she engages um, a kill squad. Depending on how they approach her, she may or may not jump the wall. Now, ideally, you might have even more tiles um, separating her and the wall, making it more difficult um, to get to her. But that also makes it easier to get into the compartment she's in. So if you have the two tile buffer between her and um, the walls, now the entire, all four sides don't have to be this, but if you have two of the sides like it, so for example, if you were to have it like, uh, 
let me do this here like this. This would be fine as well if you're suspecting they're gonna come from the top of the base because this way it's very difficult to predict um, if the queen's gonna jump the wall and if they don't, and if the queen doesn't, and if they don't have a jump spell, the king will have trouble, you know, getting towards her. If the queen, if there's bowlers in the chaos squad, that's a different story. But oftentimes it's the king, and if he can't reach her, they might not take out the queen, and your queen might be able to shoot down hogs. So two tiles is a magic number. If you only have one tile, um, try to do what you can to move around compartments and make it two, because two's a at the point where you have two tiles between the queen and the wall, it be starts to be a guessing game if she'll jump the wall or not, which is what you want as the defender. You want that unpredictability. Moving on, this is one that is very simple, but it's often overlooked. If you have a defense such as an Inferno Tower, or we could even swap this out for an Expo if I have one, um, oftentimes you see like this same two tile buffer like I just showed with the queen, and then you have compartments going out in each direction. A queen standing on the outside of the base where that red air bomb is cannot reach the expo or inferno tower, whatever building is two tiles diagonally from it, um, assuming there's these walls jutting out on either side. Now, if this compartment's not here, the queen can just walk down to like here or here and shoot the expo easily. But from a straight diagonal position, a two tile buffer is enough that the queen can't reach that defense. So keep that in mind. It does look like she'd be able to reach it from this red air bomb, but she can't. So if you're building a, a base, this is a good thing to have if you want to protect whatever this building is from the queen. Um, if you're attacking, keep that in mind. You can't queen walk this defense unless you're going to wall break in and get closer to it. So you can't reach from there. Important thing that's often overlooked. Okay, next one here, moving along, is... For wizard towers, you want to try to set them up, at least like one or two of them, on the outside of the base. This is a good way to defend witches at Town Hall 9, but we also see witches used at 10 and 11 as well. So you have these wizard towers that are um, two tiles away from the outer wall. Now the outer wall, just to clarify, this is the outside of the base where that red air bomb is. You have them far enough away that bowlers can't reach them, but witches can. And what that does is it makes it so any bowlers or wizards which have more limited range than the witches, they'll keep going along the outside of the base from this building to this building, um, but the witches will come up and engage the wizard tower, which will allow the wizard tower to shoot them back and kill them pretty easily. So what you do is you have a two tile um, buffer here. You have the two tiles in between the wizard tower and the wall, but once you get to that tile that's past the wizard tower, you have an indent one wall. So a witch standing where this red air bomb is can reach that wizard tower, but anything else like a wizard or a bowler cannot. So that will cause the, the witches to step up into that little gap. The wizard can take them out and that will end the witches, which is important to take out witches in an attack. Now, if there's healers on them, it'll be a different story, but at least they'll get held up and it t will take them forever to take out a wizard tower considering how high HP it is. And you can also have other defenses to help take out those witches um, as well. So an important thing to do to kill those outer witches moving around the outside of the base that we see at uh, Town Hall 9, 10, 11, very common attacks. Um, this next one, if you have extra walls, it's not a bad idea to put them um, next to a spring trap to force the hogs onto that spring trap or giants because we start to see giants more in HGHB attacks. Now you might be wondering, um, don't hogs jump walls? Why, why does it matter? They do jump walls, but only when they absolutely have to. Um, if a hog is on this cannon it, and it's attacking it from like the top part of the cannon up here, it won't go straight across to that wizard tower. It'll go down and through here um, because they don't like to jump the wall if it's just a difference of one tile or so. So this will force hogs to, uh, to go to the spring trap and you'll get the maximum three hogs. You can only do it on one side if you want to. Of course, it does make it a little more obvious where your spring traps are, so keep that in mind, but it's a good idea to do if you want to get the maximum um, hogs flung off, is use those walls to guide the hogs to the spring trap. Okay, moving on, um, this is basically one last point, these, these two um, little setups here. 
You don't want to have your compartments like this if the outside of the base is here. Generally speaking, now there's a lot of exceptions, of course. You don't want compartments that are excessively wide and because they allow for queen charges with multiple layers of wall breakers, which is something you don't want. So um, you don't, if this was even wider, especially um, if you move it out farther like that. Um, and, you know, of course, we have buildings here. We'll put a few buildings. Um, it makes it too easy to wall break multiple layers, two, three layers of the base for a queen charge. So avoid doing that. These compartments are a little bit better and safer when you're defending against queen charges. These little um, uh, compartments that are, I guess, perpendicular to the queen as she moves along the outside of the base. This is a better way to defend. Of course, you want to have air defenses and point defense in these areas to kill healers and to target the queen from the uh, from safely inside the base with this magic four tiles from the wall, like I said in the first tip. Um, but generally speaking, you want to make it, these compartments um, more vertical. Now, you can, of course, have these compartments that are, that are uh, oriented in this direction, but as long as you mix in some of these compartments, it'll make it difficult to wall break multiple layers because the wall breakers will target this compartment, then this compartment, then this compartment, all targeting the outer layer of walls. They won't get into, let's say if you have second layers like that and like that, they won't get into the second layer until they've broken all of the compartments um, that are closer to them on the outside. So keep that in mind, mix in those vertical, I don't know how to describe it, but you know what I mean, those compartments that are um, skinnier rather than the wider compartments that are spread across the outside of the base. Um, so that's it for the tips, hope it helped. Um, we talked a little bit about wall breaker pathing. I have a very extensive video on the details of how wall breaker AI works. A few videos back, check that out um, if you haven't already, because it'll be very helpful for understanding um, walls because they're intertwined with wall breakers. So check out the wall breaker video if you haven't already, but I hope this one helped. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bisectatron out.